One problem of many of us Christians is we're too self-centered. Somebody once quoted this as the typical prayer of the average church member. God bless me and my wife, my son John and his wife, us four, no more, amen. That kind of prayer is not going to get the kind of results that we're talking about. First, God has made us a kingdom of priests. It is our responsibility to rule the world for God by our prayers. Second, to be effective, our prayers must be both directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Third, the Spirit and the Word of God always work together. The power of the Holy Spirit only works through our prayers insofar as they are in line with the Word of God. In the Old Testament, Elijah, by his prayers, controlled the fall of rain in Israel for three and a half years. In the New Testament, the corporate prayers of the church first released Peter from a maximum security jail and then put a swift and frightening end to the career of a corrupt ruler, Herod. In each case, these prayers provoked direct angelic intervention on behalf of those for whom prayer was given. I'm going to speak about our obligation to pray for our government. It's an unfortunate fact that multitudes of Christians are not aware of this obligation that is directly placed upon us by the New Testament. First Epistle of Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. This is what Paul says. First of all then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, in order that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let me explain it to you in the following steps. First of all, the first public ministry of the church coming together in assembly is prayer. Paul says, first of all, I urge that entreaties, prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men. If we sum up those four words in one, the one word would be prayer. So the first public ministry of the church coming together in assembly is prayer. This agrees with Isaiah 56, 7 where God says, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The first particular category of men that we are to pray for, according to Paul's words, is kings and all who are in authority. Of course, on this western side of the Atlantic, there are not many kings. So let's leave out that and just say all who are in authority. Rulers, the government. Do you realize that? That the first particular topic that we are to pray for when we come together as Christians in church is our government, those in authority over us. What are we to ask God to do for and through the government? Paul says, that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Let's ask ourselves this simple question. Does the government we live under affect the life we lead? Obviously, it affects it in many ways, continually. So, if we want to lead a good life, logic and self-interest alone would indicate that we should pray for our government. What are we to ask that the government will achieve? It will achieve a situation in which we who are under the government may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. I believe that's the primary function of government clearly described. In other words, what we are really to pray for is that the government will do its job properly. Or, more simply still, we're to pray for good government. Now, in the next verse, Paul goes on to say, This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. What's the this refer to? the thing in the previous verse that we've just analyzed, which is good government. So Paul is saying, and this is tremendously important, good government is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. I wonder how many Christians realize that God approves of good government. Good government is the will of God. Now the next verse tells us one great basic reason why God approves of good government, why it's His will. It says, God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Pointed out already that God's mercy and love are out 
stretch to the whole human race. God wants all men to be saved, but they cannot be saved without coming to the knowledge of the truth. And they cannot come to the knowledge of the truth unless the truth, the truth of the gospel, is presented to them, is preached to them. So for that very simple and logical reason, God wants the truth of the gospel proclaimed to all men everywhere. All we have to do then is ask ourselves one more question. Which makes it easier to proclaim the gospel? Good government or bad government? I think the answer is too obvious to need a lot of explanation. Bad government hinders the preaching of the gospel. Good government in many different ways facilitates the preaching of the gospel. So good government is the revealed will of God. To sum up what I have just been saying, I'm going to read to you now a brief passage from my book, Shaping History Through Prayer and Fasting. This is what I say on page 42 of the book. We are now in a position to present the teaching of 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 in a series of simple logical steps. 1. The first ministry and outreach of believers meeting together in regular fellowship is prayer. 2. The first specific topic for prayer is the government. 3. We are to pray for good government. 4. God desires all men to have the truth of the gospel preached to them. 5. Good government facilitates the preaching of the gospel, while bad government hinders it. 6. Therefore, good government is the will of God. Let me read that conclusion once more. It's one of the most important conclusions in the whole of the scripture. It affects our whole lives. Good government is the will of God. Now, let me relate to that a passage in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, where John tells us a simple, basic requirement for receiving the answer to our prayer. This is what he says. This is the confidence which we have before him, that is, before God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked for him. Let me read that latter part again. If we ask anything according to God's will, we know he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. You see, the basis of successful praying is knowing that you're praying according to the will of God. And the will of God is revealed primarily in the Bible. Let's apply this principle of praying according to the will of God and knowing that God hears us and knowing that we have what we've prayed for to the particular theme we're dealing with, that is, praying for our government. I'll sum it up this way. If we pray according to God's will, He hears us. If we know that He hears us, we know that we have what we ask for. We know that good government is according to God's will. Therefore, if we pray for good government, we know that God hears us. And if we know that God hears us, we know that we have what we ask for. What are we talking about? We're talking about good government. Let me point out to you that there's no authority in Scripture to criticize the government, but there is an obligation to pray for it. And if you're one of those who criticize, let me suggest that if you spend less time criticizing and more time praying, you might have less to criticize. Because it's only if we pray knowing what is God's will that we can say we have what we pray for, that is good government. Now why do we Christians find it so hard to believe that so much depends on our praying? We take the attitude that government's outside our control. There's nothing we can do about it. We shrug our shoulders, we criticize, we complain, but we don't pray. I believe the real reason why we don't pray is because we have not understood the limitless possibilities of praying according to God's word. God gave me this specific prayer. Lord, give us leaders such that it will be for your glory to give us victory through them. Christians have a responsibility to pray for their government and that probably their prayers were the only thing that could save their country from disaster. As I close, I want to ask you this question. Could it be true of the United States? Only the supernatural power of the prayer of my people can turn away the troubles that are coming upon the United States. 
Lord, give us leaders such that it will be for your glory to give us victory through them. Amen.